Well, hello. Welcome to a, another conversation with Glenn. And we were uh, just chatting before the uh, camera started rolling. Uh, next week we've got, well, this week we've kind of had some back and forths. Uh, uh, something that's kind of thrown us off track from the, just the normal stuff we want to do. And I just wanted to get your reaction to, uh, I guess, uh, to next week and, and um, uh, the Grover North. Yeah, the Grover North. Super Grover! Show. Super Grover! <laughs> It'd be so much more fun, by the way. No, he would be great. Yeah. If Grover doesn't show up, we need somebody to do super. Grover the Muppet. Yes. Yeah, okay. I, like the, I like this idea. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, no, they're they're trying to set all these ground rules. We're going to do an expose on Grover Norquist next week. We set it for Monday. He said he can't join us until Thursday, so we moved the documentary thing that we're doing to Wednesday to accommodate him. So it's back to back, so you can see it, digest it, and the next night he can answer. But they wanted to set all kinds of ground rules and they want his wife to be on. No, this is not personal. It's not about his wife. It's not, it's about him, what he has done, his actions and who he is hanging out with. The more we look into this guy, the worse. Are you thinking he's better than you, we thought he was? No. No. The worse this guy gets, um, really bad. And I just told Tiffany, she's been super nice on the phone. And they're like, look, if you guys want this to happen, we don't give a flying crap. You want to come on? Come on. You want to state your case? State your case. I'm totally open. Right. I don't think you're going to be able to convince me, but I'm going to come in. I'm not going to do a gotcha question or anything else. I'm going to ask you tough questions. You want to come on? Great. Got the airtime for you. You don't? You think you're going to get any special treatment? You think you're going to get anything? No. I have questions. You have answers. Let's no, put those no. two together. This is, again, this is like, That's why we don't do guests. Yeah. Because we don't negotiate. People try to put in all kinds of parameters and rules and everything else. I don't do that. I've, I'm the guy who, I, honestly, you know what I thought about with Grover? Is he's going to come on. He's going to try to make it personal. He's going to try to make it about Frank Gaffney and all the crap that he said all these years. I don't really care. I don't really care. He's not going to waste the time. And the last time I did a, uh, an interview with a guest like this, what happened, Tiffany? You apologize to the audience for wasting an hour of their time. And what did we do? I kicked him off the air and I ad-libbed for 30 minutes. Everybody in the control room except for you was like, what the hell are you doing? You can't, we don't have any, Glenn, we have no show. We have no show. I don't really care. I don't care. And I think that's, if he's on, I bet you that's the way it ends. Because I think he's going to come in with BS crap and he's going to try to make it about everything but his answers. Do you know these people? Do you respect these people? Did you work with this guy? Because he's in the Muslim Brotherhood. Did you start this this foundation that's that's what i want to know and he's going to try to make it about everybody else because he's done it for 15 years not on this program and if he does if, if that's the game he wants to play he shouldn't come and if if he if he does come you better not play that game because i'll kick you off yeah. it's my network yeah. yeah and the last time that was eric massa and it ended up talking devolving into like tickle parties and all sorts of weird uh bizarreness so uh hopefully which everybody else would have continue to forward yes. yeah. because it was salacious. No, yeah. It was a right waste. It. it was yeah. a complete yeah. waste. And remember his wife was sitting there and I walked up to her afterwards. And I said, I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. Cause she knew, she knew. So let's move on to happier people. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, you, we had an interesting, uh, uh, I guess, conversation with a, a, a rabbi that stopped by to visit in the office and uh, so we wanted to ask um, you know it, it's hard enough to keep up with like your own you know religious studies and the things that you're trying to keep up with and your own doctrines and you know um, so what's what do you see about gaining because you, you're talking about doing Torah Tuesdays and trying to do uh, this, this sort of outreach so what, what do you see as um, what's your reason for uh, yeah for wanting to learn the Torah at this time in your life the Old Testament is critically important the Old Testament and the New Testament are all of our religion. All of all of Christianity is based on the Old Testament and the New Testament. You don't understand the Old Testament, forget about the New Testament. Yeah. And we don't understand the Old Testament. The Jews have the secret to the Old Testament. It's so rich, so unbelievably rich. Every single word. I mean, if I were more enterprising, I would learn Hebrew. I just don't want to learn <laughs> Hebrew. But I mean, it's so rich. And the answer uh, for everything we're looking for comes from God. I want to know his word. I want to know the New Testament. I want to know the Old Testament. And I want to know another testament, the, the one my faith has. Yeah, that, that's actually interesting, uh, focusing on the Old Testament, because a lot of churches, a lot of Christian churches kind of 
will skip that. You know, they've like rinsed they the they, Jew out of Jesus. Yeah, when when do you like they'll just skip like Deuteronomy because it's just very long and you know laborious. But like they don't instead of like you know because the Bible's you know hey let's get the old Bible on you. But the Bible right? says all the words are profitable, you know why not just I, the New Testament. Right. You know why I'm excited for Deuteronomy? Do you know that 30 percent of all of our federal documents, 30 percent based in Deuteronomy, and we just we just roll over it. The founders didn't. The founders n knew how important Deuteronomy was. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing? And I also just, I mean, this rabbi is great. <laughs> He's funny. He's I very just, entertaining. We I just, you know, I, I mean, Tiffany is Jewish and I'm more Jewish than she is, I think. <laughs> and uh, I just, you have such a rich faith, such a rich faith. And I don't think people really appreciate it. I mean, there are only 3 million people that actually live it and practice it. That's, that's nothing. That's nothing. That, that, that'll be gone that fast. Yeah. We I, need to preserve it. I think the audience will embrace it. And I think people probably wouldn't think that they would, oh, your audience is evangelical Christian. They're not going to care about this. They're I gonna think love the it. opposite is true because the lessons They're are gonna love it. for yeah. everyone. As I said a afterwards, you know, we were talking about it and I said, you know, everybody who is an expert in television or whatever, they all said, oh, Founders Fridays on Fox, that won't go anywhere. That was our highest rated shows uh, every time. It takes a good teacher, we had David Barton, and it takes a subject that people want to learn. And, and I mean, you saw everybody. I mean, you know, what do we have? 20 people in my office all learning the Torah. And, uh, and they were, all, everybody left like, that was fantastic. Yeah, and you think about it. I mean, I don't, I don't remember what the exact number is, but a, c a couple months ago, we were talking about this on one of the programs, and the number of Jews on the planet is actually, it's shockingly low. Like 16 just, million. If you haven't thought about it, I mean, that's not a lot out of the whole world population. No. That's not, so when you have a chance, if you're not, unless you're plugged into a Jewish community, you're actually Jewish, you're not, you don't get those sorts of chances and you know what? every day. Most Jew, Yeah. Tiffany. I grew up I mean, culturally Jewish, and it was just taken for granted. Mm -hmm. It's like a country club. This is different than the cultural Jewish, which is also rich and great. But the religious Jew is, Very oh my rare. gosh, I and it's so like rich. 400 families in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Yeah, 400 families that live it. There are 3 million on the planet. But when we went to Israel, you saw a difference between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, sure. wild difference. Tel Aviv is New York Jewish. Jerusalem is Jewish Jewish, live it Jewish. Total difference. Yeah, I think it'll be really interesting. Yeah, cool. All right, so next week we've got Grover and uh, <laughs> Torah lessons. Super Grover. <laughs> it's Super Grover. And I am Choo Choo.